A big consistency I found about how to talk to climate change deniers is that you need to know your audience. This video is for people who accept the scientific consensus that human activity is causing global warming and therefore creating climate change. This video is gonna be a step-by-step -step process about how to talk to climate change deniers in order to convince them. The first thing you're going to do is ask questions. Your instinct might be to start listing off all the scientific facts and statistics, but studies continue to show that with climate change deniers, facts don't matter. Asking questions about them also keeps you from yelling, ah! which sometimes is what you might want to do, but we need you calm. Which leads to the second point now, which is that science-minded people, we're gonna have to go to the local library and take a class on how to storytell. There's a neurological reason why we need stories, because the parts of our brains that react to stories are more linked to emotion and action. And if you want a good example, think about the image and the story behind the straw and the turtle's nose. It created the revolution of straw. The straw? Revolution. The revolution of the straw! It's why it's easier at parties to bond with people about stories, about movies, about true crime podcasts, about spooky stories, like my favorite one, Bernstein Bears in the Dark. And the part of your brain that analyzes and processes scientific information is more related to logical thinking and inaction. <laughs> Some scholars think the scientific revolution and the enlightenment was anti-story. <laughs> Before that, people were like, we're the center of everything. And that rainbow over there, that is a Spirit. After the scientific revolution, they're like, mm, we're actually the center of nothing. We're just insignificant animals on a tiny planet revolving around the sun in an ever expanding universe that was created billions of years ago. And that rainbow over there, that's just light through water, babe. <laughs> so here are some stories to keep in your back pocket. The first story I like to bring up all the time is called the biggest lie about climate change. I made a video about this if you want to get all the detailed information. Essentially, large oil companies were some of the first people to fund scientists to figure out the impacts of what would happen if we released all the CO2 into the atmosphere. They found very early on in the 70s and 80s that it would cause the destruction that it is currently causing right now. They knew that if people found out, they would be regulated and they would lose money. They lied to everyone, including your mom. They planted the seed of climate change denial and now we we are all suffering at the hands of them and they have billions of dollars and they need to be sued. And I think that this is a really important angle. I think we can all get on board with the billionaires behind these oil companies being the bad guys in our narrative. There's a great Hollywood movie that you can watch with a climate change denier or tell them to watch and it's called Deep Water Horizon. It's about the BP oil spill. You got romance, you got dad bods. It's got oh bad guys, which are the oil execs trying to make billions of dollars while people die and the environment is destroyed. Or maybe in this story, should the bad guy just be the molecule carbon dioxide? Like, I don't know, I'm a little desperate here. <laughs> I'm carbon dioxide and I'm going to kill you or at least your great grandchildren. Now that the climate crisis is becoming more and more apparent every day, we are gonna be innately having more and more stories about its effects. And of course, we have Greta. And the reason that she's working is she has an amazing story. And she is emotional, and she is honest, and that is what is resonating with people. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. Stories are important, but we also need to have the scientific information. At a certain point in this conversation, you are going to need to be equipped. At this point, maybe they're throwing some random studies at you. Throwing in some conspiracy theories to kind of spook you. And we can't be equipped to argue against every pseudoscience article about climate change denial because to be honest, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Thankfully, there is a specific website that does all of this work for you called Skeptical Science. They take all the popular climate change denial arguments and then they lay out very clearly the correct scientific data. They link to many peer-reviewed articles on the subject. They also divide it from beginner to expert. So depending on your comfort level with science, they give you a synopsis that fits for you. If they're throwing things at you in this conversation, just, oh, one sec, gotta pee. Go to the bathroom, open up the website, find the argument they're telling you, get all the scientific backed information, open the studies, go sit down and be like, well, look at here, baby, I got the goods. <laughs> or don't say it like that, because it maybe kind of sounds like you're hitting on them. I don't know, that could be cute. Hopefully at this point, you might have got somewhere with them, but maybe not. And that leads to the most challenging part of all of these conversations, the most controversial part of this topic, and something that I need your help with, which is the big ideological issue. Okay, we're gonna zoom in on America right now. Oh, look at America, center of the world, yet again. Just kidding. I'm Canadian, very similar. What? Climate change denial, a lot of people think it has to do with religion. It doesn't. The main reason that people deny climate change are political and economic ideologies. The fundamental framework of climate change denial is that climate change 
is a liberal hoax fabricated in order to usher in secretly socialism. But what about Nin the scientists who say it's worse than ever? Uh, you'd have to show me the scientists because they have a very big political agenda, Leslie. How does free market conservatism relate to climate change? Very much so relates to the policies uh, that the left pushes in the name of global warming. You might start to realize that you butt heads with them about a specific thing, which is regulation. Whether we should be diverting our funds to support an ideology instead of maximizing our investments and national security. Psychological studies have actually found that people with a worldview more inclined towards collective action, social justice, and skepticism of corporate power are more likely to accept the scientific consensus on climate change. On the other hand, these same psychological studies found that those with a worldview that's more individualistic, skeptical of government, and more supportive of corporations are more likely to not accept the scientific consensus on climate change. These are fundamental beliefs. These are worldviews. These are people's identities. I think this is the crux of a lot of the conversations you will be having with the climate change denier. And so right now I'm gonna tell you the types of information that I have found. Debbie Dooley is a Republican Tea Party member who really is trying to combat climate change denial within their party. You have to understand one thing. The Republican Party has always been in the past a party of conservation. She likes to point out that Richard Nixon created the EPA. Interesting. Each of us all across this great land has a stake in maintaining and improving environmental quality. Ronald Reagan signed the Montreal Protocol, which really helped to fix the big giant hole in our ozone layer. Pretty cool. She likes to say things like a diverse energy grid leads to energy freedom, energy choice, competition, national security, innovation. And I think those are obviously buzzwords, but they're good buzzwords and let's use them. I do not know how we make climate change become a conversation outside of ideological issues. So please, please, please help me in the comments below. I'm gonna read them all. Let me know if you have any suggestions, any books, any research to read. I guess this is me being vulnerable vulnerable asking for help, which leads to the last point of the research that I found, which is that in these conversations, you need to be vulnerable. It is important that we talk about kids. I became a science teacher because I love children. When I see kids, I start to think about the climate crisis and what are these kids gonna think when they grow up and look back and think we did nothing, let alone think that we denied what was going on. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be a kid right now. I think we see them screaming at the Fridays for Future marches and being vulnerable and scared for the next generation could be a powerful tool in these conversations. Then it's up to us as adults to fight for these kids. Climate change isn't gonna happen or not, it's happening. And the way that we react to it and when we react to it is gonna decide how severe this issue is gonna be. We humans are amazing. We make the musical Hamilton. I saw it recently and I was like, how did he do this? <laughs> We understand the Big Bang. We are brilliant people when we put our minds together. We can figure this out. So thanks for watching and peace.